Hello, babies. Hey, babies. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. What's up, Callow? How you doing? Good. You sound beat already. It's Tuesday, oh. man. Get it together. No. <laughs> I got to tell you, like, I thought this double joy practice thing was a good idea for me, but it really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. <laughs> Part of it's my fault, but, you know, I'm just tired. So, I'll be happy to get through this week, end training camp, get through the preseason, reset next week. That's how I feel about the whole thing. I mean, I will say, I will say this: uh, it was New York, New Jersey, and Miami, not you know Buffalo and Charlotte, North Carolina. Like, like I said, some of it's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> you can't resist. Is... You can't resist. I mean, come on, you know, like Yolo. Just... You only live once. <laughs> yeah, you know, like. The playlists for those areas are just different <laughs> than the ones, you know, so you just get pumped up and you're ready to go and you're all excited. And then, you know, whatever, you know, I'll survive. It's uh, so, like I said, 30, 40% of it's my fault. I went a little too fast, too far. That's all, <laughs> you know, I got to pace myself. I've learned I need to pace myself. And as I get older, I got to pace myself even more, hmm. but uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right. Let's get to the news. <laughs> Yes, he's the quarterback. I think we said this. I think I said this yesterday. He will probably be named the quarterback today. Everybody on earth assumed that that was going to be the case. Um, there was no reason to even question it. And in the very, very, very limited, um, you know, preseason appearances that he made, he was terrific. You know, like he had three series. He was really good. The numbers look great. The uh, It just feels great. Looks great. Everything looks like he's under control. Cool, calm, collected. Nothing seems too big for him at this point. Be interested to see what happens when he plays, you know, a defense that, you know, isn't playing a preseason game. We'll find out in a couple of weeks. But Jaden Daniels being named the starting quarterback is one of the least surprising things that's happened around here in a long time. So Yeah, and, and you know, it wasn't like Marcus Mariota played well enough to overtake him either. I think this is a factor a lot of people just haven't really touched on because Jaden is that guy, but – it's not like Marcus lit it up either. Plus, he got hurt, so we all know how that kind of works. Like, Jaden jumped ahead of him and, you know, was never going to look back. Not to say that he ever fell behind, but no, not shocking at all. And once again, boxes were being checked. He checked yeah. them all. And yeah. as I said to you, in preseason, how much can we look forward to to what some of these guys execute? And to me, it was, are you getting in and out of the huddle? Can you call plays? He audibled, which I didn't think we were going to see in the preseason, and he got a little heat for, but for all intents and purposes, he looks like a starting quarterback. There's, there's no way he wasn't going to be the starter unless it was disastrous. Yeah, he, I uh, like, it's been, every step of the way has been really good. It was funny yesterday, you know, because, you know, me and all the media friends, they like to get all, they, they don't like anything that happens in any order. You know, it's just <laughs> like, this is so obvious this was going to happen. You still have an announcement for it. Like, why, yeah. why wouldn't you? You still, yes. like, it's still a big moment, like, He's been named the starting quarterback. You hold a press conference for it. Yes, it's been obvious, but you didn't know it was going to be obvious when camp started. Like you have to like go through camp. And this coach has been preaching all along. And in his case, he said from day one, his line was, this isn't a secret here, what we're trying to do. Like we want him to be the starter, which was, we want him to be the starter, but we have to go through the process with him. And we did. And everything looks great. And at times he looks more decisive than Mariota does been around the block a lot longer than he has Mariota, by the way, has been great. Like they, he named check, he named checked him a million times yesterday. Quinn and Daniels did about how supportive he's been walked down the same road. I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks with some of the people down there. I'm like, Mariota plays his cards, right? He could be the backup here for five years. Like, because he's just the right temperament, right personality understands where he is in his career and then I'll have to change a thing on the offense, you know, if he were to go in and have to play a game because his skill set is very similar to what Jaden has. Even Driscoll's is too, to some degree. So they got the right quarterback room there. And, it, you know, like, so I don't know. Like, what, like, I don't know. Everyone's trying to find something to be all ornery about. But, like, they went through a process. He checked all the boxes. The time was now to name him the starter. It was after the second preseason game. What's weird about that? Like, yeah. <laughs> let's just... He did it. Congratulations. No, no. I mean, I, I get that too. I mean, I know some people don't want to celebrate milestones, but this is one that you have to at least name. Like we all knew when the Caps had an open captain vacancy 
in what? I think it was 2009, 2010. Ovechkin was going to be the captain. You still have to announce that. You still have to have a moment for it. And hockey's probably a little bit of a bigger deal compared to a franchise that's had to name their eighth starting quarterback in eight years. But you still have to do the thing, even if you've done it a million yeah. times. Yeah, there's, there's no – and there's no right or wrong way to do it either. That's the other part about it. Well, you knew I was going to get married when I got engaged. You still have to show up in a nice suit. <laughs> that's right. Yes, exactly. Like, sorry. Right. <laughs> you still got to bring me a present. You still have to do that. Correct. Correct. Now, anyway. after the second or third time, though, we all know it kind of gets right. over. It kind of yeah. gets overdone. The, so. third time, the third time is like, I'm not celebrating this. And it's really for her because you, I don't trust anymore. <laughs> right. You know, we're going to celebrate when is this going to end? But on a first go, uh, you know, you do it. You do it. You show up. You put on your nice suit and you say nice things, even though it was obvious what was going to happen. But that's the good news. It was obvious it was going to happen. Like I, I was, it was funny. Like we were, everybody was kind of going back and forth on a couple of things with him yesterday. And some of them were like, like, this is obvious. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good thing. Like the guy who got picked number three, who's coming here to play on Sunday. It's not obvious actually. And they don't have a quarterback on their team and they're rebuilding and they have a new coach and he hasn't definitively won the job yet. <laughs> like, like, this is a good thing that they're doing this. And like, right. if you don't care to see it that way. It is like, he obviously won the job. He obviously is going to be the quarterback. Caleb obviously is going to be the quarterback there. The guy who was picked number three on a team that doesn't have a quarterback and has a new coach hasn't obviously won their job yet. Like that's way different situation than what we're in right now. So no, a hundred percent. And I said this and we talked about it on my show yesterday about how this regime too is all about competition. They weren't going to hand it to him either. They had to stay consistent, even though they know he's the best quarterback on the roster. You had to make them earn it, just like everyone else on this roster is earning all of their positions. I think yeah. the only four guys that are not, quote-unquote, earning them are McLaurin, Payne, Allen, and Wagner. That's it, and that's okay. Yeah. Like, one of them's one of the best linebackers of all time, going to go to the Hall of Fame. The other was one of the best wide receivers in franchise history, and the other two are defensive tackles that we're not worried about. Like, other than those, every single person has to compete to wherever they're at right now, yeah. and they, they needed to make Jaden was, was, you know, a part of that, too. They made everybody, they've made everybody compete. In Payne and Allen's case, there's nobody even remotely close that's better than them on the roster. Right. Right? <laughs> and with McLaurin, I mean, we could talk on and on about the receiving core because it was brought up again yesterday, you know, like where the hierarchy is and who's doing what, what the competition looks like. Well, that one guy has four straight thousand yard seasons. So, and he's had it <laughs> under adverse situations with really poor schemes at some point and terrible quarterbacking at other points. And he's still able to produce and he looks like he's in his best shape and he's locked in and he's the guy who clearly is their number one. So the only people that have been, you know, quote unquote protected that way are those, but they deserve it. Yes. They deserve it. They've earned that. And They've earned that. He's a rookie. Like I, like, I didn't understand this. Like he's a rookie. What if he crapped his pants in camp? Like you don't know, like you don't know until he does it. So like, so they gave him the opportunity to show what he can do. He's gotten better the whole way. At every step, I mean, the whole, I've been trying to be careful about it too. Even in the spring, I'm like, this looks really good. Like the guy that I heard about at LSU, the work ethic, the ability, it's all there. It's all evident. And now, you know, if we're just going to start nitpicking him because he doesn't know how to slide, then we're in a very good spot here because everything else seems to be ahead of schedule. And that's what we want. And the better part is the other part that's advertised that I love about it is he's clearly capable of being a running quarterback, but that's not his first, second, or third option. Like they've run some designed run plays, but even in the preseason, again, limited time, he's never vacating the pocket really quickly to run, even though he's capable of it. And that's the other part about this. He's an advanced player. He has a lot of experience. He's played with different coaches and different systems. And he clearly understands that he's going to have to throw the ball to win and he'll run the ball when he has to. And I appreciate that about him too. No, I mean, all the decision-making has been spot on, the little that we've seen of it, right? And in fact, like I keep referencing, he's gone above and beyond in terms of those audibles and what he's yeah. done. And like, once again, the teacher, as in Quinn, gets mad at him because he's kind of jumping ahead of the curriculum. Like, we've yeah. all seen that kid before. Like, but that's what's happening here. And it's not even like he's mad. He's been very tongue-in-cheek about it, very lighthearted about it, which is like the difference here 
with him in the last regime is he's like joking about it. Like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta get him, you know, to, to stop doing that a little bit. And basically though, I think you and I hit, hit on it before too, is they just don't want to like reveal anything what he can do now. Like they, they're trying to keep, they're trying to keep him on uh, close to the vest at this point. I think that audible thing had a little bit to do with that. They don't want people to see any glimpses of where he is. He is a rookie come Tampa. There's going to be, you know, you can't hide it any longer, but you might as well hide it as long as you can. And, you know, like he really does feel ahead of schedule. I think the thing, every time I look back and watch the series that he's played in the games, and I really do appreciate that Miami brought it a little bit, maybe not with all their starters, but they brought it. Um, different coverages, different looks, blitzes, like as you don't see a lot of that in the preseason. So I think it was a pretty good test. He's very calm and very collected. Like there doesn't seem to be, he doesn't seem to get rushed. And that's a really good sign too. Often like those plays that Caleb Williams made the other day are outrageous. And if he's going to do that stuff regularly, he's going to be Mahomes. Um, but like, just watch closely and go look at his completion percentage. Like he's bailing out of stuff like that's, but that's an early sign of a rookie quarterback that doing stuff like that, this guy isn't even doing that. And I know it's a really small subset, but when people say like, it feels like he's been doing this a long time. It does. It feels like he's been doing this a long time. And off of that Jets game, when they got so mad about him, you know, checking out of a play, I mean, was it they were mad because it was an act of defiance, maybe? Or is it, why do why are we going to show anybody what he's capable of at this point? Like, just go out there. You know, we know what you're doing in practice. This reminds me of the McLaurin thing a couple of years ago, where they just didn't play him in the preseason. And I'm like, that's weird. And then they put him out on the field and he's burning Eagles corners and like, oh, you're like, use it to your advantage. So I think there's a lot going on here. In the end, though, like, yeah, it was obvious he was going to be the starting quarterback at some point, but you can't sit here and say that he didn't earn it. Like, they didn't gift it to him, and he earned it. Go watch his play. Go watch these practices. If you saw the joint practice in Miami, you would have been like, they could have named him the starter after that, the way it was going. No, it's funny, too, to, to kick it back to, like, what the media was like. Oh, it's obvious he was going to be the starter. It's like, well, I don't know, like, the last time, you know, we had a rookie quarterback in here or like a second year quarterback, not named Sam Howell. I'll, I'll throw that one away. But like, I don't know. Dwayne Haskins didn't exactly look great. Right. And he was named the starter. And we we're all like, mm, all right, let's see if this works out. And then we found out it was just extended preseason. Right. He played four games. Right. Or you go you even go back to Robert. Not that Robert didn't light the world on fire in his rookie year, but. We didn't really see much in training camp and preseason that year. Like we saw a little bit of it, but it wasn't like this reassuring how how Jaden has been. Like, oh, he looks great. He looks fantastic. It was this kind of like, all right, let's hope this works out. Like we didn't see this overwhelming. Oh, he looks really good. He has command of the offense. You know, RG three is an interesting one. Like because if you remember, they built suited to his skill set the first time around. Maybe not the offense they wanted to run, but an offense that suited his skill set. That's not what's happening here with this quarterback. They're asking him to run Kingsbury scheme. And to this point, and again, I think everybody needs to slow down because he hasn't played a regular season game yet. And it's going to be different when they play Todd Bowles and a playoff caliber defense and a guy who has eaten rookie quarterbacks for lunch for years. Let's see what that looks like. But that's not what's happening here. They're not catering to a specialist who happened to be an elite athlete. No, they're asking him to run Kingsbury's pro style offense that has multiple looks and downfield passing and will incorporate some design runs because he's very capable of it, but aren't going to feature it as far as I can tell, aren't going to feature it at this point, which is why, I mean, they keep talking about him, get down, get down. They don't, even want him running the ball a ton doesn't even seem like it's a they're not going to feature this thing so i'll give the shanahan's credit because they realized i don't think rg3 in fairness could do something like this right off the bat and we never knew whether he could or he couldn't because injuries derailed his career but they're not looking at daniels this way that we have to incorporate so college style offense to have any success with this guy we're putting him right into the fire with a pro offense and so far He's passing the test so far, you know, like, and that also is a really good sign here. I would say the flip side of, of both of them though, too, was 
the Shanahan's decided, okay, Robert, this is what you do best. You run. We're going to cater the yeah. offense to you. But then what yeah. happened when Robert and, uh, you know, uh, his dad didn't want to do it anymore, they forced their hand and said, we want to be a pocket passer. And they're like, you can't do that. And, of course, that not only did injuries derail it, that derailed it too. He wanted to, you know, run his offense now all of a sudden, and that didn't end up work out, working out. I mean, this is like Ailes in Chicago where – they actually tried to force him to do the offense Jaden is doing or like something similar, a pass forward offense. By the middle of the season, they realized he wasn't ready to do that. And they started catering to him and he posted these crazy rush numbers because that's what he's best at. And he happens to be unbelievably good at it. And when he's out in open space, I keep feeling like with proper coaching, he might be able to turn it around because I think he could be a really good passer if he gets in the right situation with the right passers. RG3 was similar. They they have this elite athlete. He was capable of doing these things. They catered an offense around him. That's not what's happening here. Like that, that's, and this is a really, really, really good sign too, that like they're asking him to do all these different things that are basically a pro style offense. And he's so far so good. He'll be the first to admit though, and tell you, I'm not ready yet. I'm still learning. It's my first go around. I talked to him after the game the other day in Miami. And he was like, like uh, he was very happy that they threw all the looks at him. And I asked him why. And he said, because I hadn't seen this stuff before and I need to have people do this for me. And like at every turn, he seems to be humble, open-minded, wants to run the offense the way it is designed, wants to succeed in it. And I think, I think at some point in all where it appears that he's heading, they may open it up to him running the ball a little bit more because it's a weapon, but they're not designing it that way, even though it is for him. So really, I mean, all of it is really, really, really good signs to me right now. Well, I think too, he's passing, you know, um, running this offense with flying colors. And if you don't have to rely on him running it yet, that just becomes a dagger at some point, yes. right? You get to, you get to put it in your back pocket and you know how the NFL works. Every single coach that is coaching against him, is going to say, guys, we might be the first team that they run against with this. So you True. you have to watch, and they have to waste time practicing that. Like, well, you know, you know, you know how this works. He gets if he gets particularly good at it too. Like the one thing I think Daniel Jones is really good at are those fakes and keeps, and he's actually very fast. Well, if it gets to the point where people start to fall asleep on the fact that like he doesn't really run the ball very much, he's going to catch people and pop off these big runs because he's going to catch them on the backside. And I think that's the hope here. The fact that they're not featuring it, though, at least at this, as far as I can tell, they're not. And I don't feel like they're going to. It doesn't feel like that's happening at all. Like everything that we're talking about with them building this offense that we haven't seen a lot of that we're trying to figure out what they're going to do is all the run game or the passing game. And it doesn't involve him running the ball. All of it. Like every single piece of it features him as a passer. So I think this is all really, really good and heading in the right direction. But he is a rookie. They have a line that's questionable, you know, and they have receivers. They haven't figured out roles for, and I don't know that anyone would look at that entire core and go, there's a bunch of pro bowlers over there. That's not what the bears are throwing out on the field. So there are flaws on the roster. There are holes on the roster. There are weaknesses on the roster, but at the most important position, I feel really, really good at what the baseline is right now. No, and we've, we've talked about it all off season. If they figure this out that we know, like, let's say they still have a bad record, but we know Jaden is keeping them close every game. That's a win for the entire season. Like that's all we yep. need to figure out because the problem, the problem with this fan base is going to be what happened with Houston last year. Houston had the perfect scenario where Stroud popped off and they decided to go for it right away. And they down were division, like, like right, don't they, forget that part. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that could happen here but feels very unlikely correct yeah. and like they won a playoff game with them and like the fervor this fan base I, I can already tell what like is hoping that's what happens here and i think everyone needs to just like realize what has happened 99 percent of rookie quarterback seasons is it's you see signs of it and then you go for it you know if if you see those signs and I think everyone just needs to realize that that like if it's not Stroud it's still okay is what I'm getting at here too yeah I mean like the Bears to me have they're gonna be they're gonna be interesting because if Caleb is ahead of schedule and some of the highlights suggest he is but some of the stats suggest he's not with the talent that they're throwing out there with him immediately they could be really good uh similarly though 
I got a hard time buying that it's an easy road in their division because with Detroit and Green Bay, good luck with that. Like yeah. I like they're not going to both be bad. Like that's not going to happen. Like what ended up happening for Houston was very fortunate. Like not only were they very good and Stroud was terrific in his rookie season, but Jacksonville had an unusually down year off of a playoff season. And then Indianapolis and Tennessee were both rebooting. And then Richardson got hurt. So you don't even know like what he is yet as a quarterback. So that became a two-team race very quickly. And all they needed was Jacksonville to not have the type of season they were projected to have. And they didn't. And so they stole that division. In the case of Chicago, good luck having both Detroit and Green Bay both go sideways. It doesn't feel like that that's possible. And for us, like... I don't, I think Philly's roster's too good for that to happen. But considering what it was a year ago and how it went the wrong way and how they didn't fire their head coach, I could buy into some scenario by which things don't start well. And if you look at their schedule, because they're going to Brazil and that, you know, playing a good team, like if they get off on the wrong foot and the chemistry's off again, then maybe they're not as good as I think they're going to be. And then you can make the case that. Dallas really isn't as strong as they've been. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. And for some reason, they're not signing their stars to contracts and that may piss everybody off. And you never know, like that might spiral the wrong way. So like, but we need a lot of steps to get to that point. Like you got to make up a lot of things have to happen for that scenario to be Houston again. I just want to see this team competitive. I want to see this team in December playing games that have potential wild card or if they get lucky division on the line just be in a position like that and I want to see Jaden continue to grow get better get better get better and show the promise that he's shown through the spring and the summer and then I'll feel really good about what's happening next year because I think we all get it like I look at this roster and I go there's too many there's too many new people and too many holes to believe anything crazy is going to happen but it doesn't mean they can't end up with a 500 or better record that's either threatening or sneaks into the playoffs at all, especially if he's going to be CJ Stroud, because we've learned this forever. We've seen bad quarterbacking. What does good quarterbacking do? Good quarterbacking masks a lot of issues and we'll see what happens with him this year. No, I mean, I think my, my expect, well, not expectation, but I think my best case scenario is they hover around 500 for a while. Like we'll call it, eight, nine weeks, or even maybe two games under 500. And they just get within striking distance. I think that's all you can ask. Yeah. Like, give the them... December games mean something. We yes. go to New Orleans and there's something on the line. You know, Correct. like, Atlanta comes here late. It's a home game. And they're probably vying for their division. And that yep. game matters for both of us because we could get in the wild card. Like, that's the scenario I'd love to see. No, exactly. Like, knocking someone off to possibly get yourself into that position. That's, that's what I'm hoping. For. Yes. Uh, since we mentioned him... And I haven't really talked about it. Where's RG3 going to go? That was, <laughs> that was mildly surprising to me that they did that. And, you know, like, not, not that I want to get in their business right now because I don't care. But, like, when you're paying Stephen A, whatever you're going to pay him, and you pay McAfee, whatever you're going to pay him, to come back and then say we don't have enough money to afford everybody else is ridiculous. Those are just the choices you've made. And I also think at a place like that, it never comes down to money. Like ultimately you can use that as an excuse. So there's some other reason why they wanted to make this move. I don't know why, but they did. And um, he's gone, which, you know, like for us, it's so easy to just go after him and make fun of him. I thought he was good on television. Like I got a little annoyed with his internet stuff and his posting stuff because he just inserted himself into everything you know, but that's him. He's going to insert himself into every possible thing to try to get attention. But went on TV and semi either scripted into whatever, you know, segments they were doing. I found him to be entertaining, poignant, good, energetic. So I, I was a little surprised that they moved on from him. You don't think it was the croissant picture that put it over? What was that? You didn't see that? The croissant picture? <laughs> Oh, no. You should uh, you should just hit the Google machine RG three croissant and you should is just... it appropriate or is it not appropriate? I mean, no, but like, it just involves a French pastry. That's all. You're just gonna have to Google it. I, I can't. I can't explain it. Like, 
I really don't know what you're talking about, and I don't even know where that's going. Like, (laughs) if you just listen to, if like, I don't know what you're talking about, and you're just like, you have to Google French pastry RG3, and I'm like, what? What's the possible outcome that I'm going to see? What's that search going to give me? (laughs) We'll do it during the break, and then I want you to react to it on the other side because, yeah, basically, it basically became a meme, like fast, like. I can't believe you didn't see that. It was it, it literally happened the morning of the Jets game, I want to say, or maybe the night before. And it's him and his fia- it's him and his wife. He's just eating a-, a giant croissant. Yeah, but it, look at how he's eating it. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. And well, so again, people, like I wasn't sure where that was going, and you know, people no. were uh, cropping just RG three in that one part, and so it became its own meme but people were like you know what you're doing you know it's going to go viral because you are uh being wildly inappropriate with a croissant that that's that's essentially what happened they uh i'll never forget when i was up there i think i've told you this before with Lindsay. did i tell you what i I, how i protected her once Lindsay's zardiac uh you might have I, i don't remember this though so uh it was around july 4th and of course joey chestnuts coming to the studio and of course, the producer wants to do a bit where we eat a lot of hot dogs. You did tell me this, and, yes, yeah. And, I, and Lindsay <laughs> was working. I think I was working with her, or I was either she was doing a show. I don't know. We were in the bullpen together, like getting ready for a show. I don't remember if I was on the show with her or not. That part I don't remember. <laughs> but she told me they wanted her to like you know do you know a faux you know mini hot dog eating contest. And I just said to her, I go, "You can't do that." <laughs> she was like, "Why?" And I go. You cannot do that. You can't shove a bunch of hot dogs in your mouth live on television. You just can't do it. I'm like, it's, I don't know how you would shove a bunch of hot dogs into your mouth on live television, but I do know that the internet's going to enjoy it very much, and they're going to find ways to profile that. You literally cannot do that. And it's going to live forever. There's no getting rid forever. of it. You just, yeah. You- yeah. Are you three in the, so you think he got fired because of the croissant? <laughs> I think it could have been a turning point. That, that's all I'm saying. Like, I think they could have been on the fence and they're like, all right, dude, that's that it. Would get it. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying it could have been hmm. the turning point. He could have been on thin yeah. ice and that could have broken the ice. That's all I'm saying. I, I, yes, it could have. Uh, yes, it could have broken the ice. All right, let me take a quick break. Very much to show HBO 630, the sports capital. All right, welcome back. Brad Watson Show, ESPN 630, the sports capital. All right, a few other things about the commanders from yesterday when Dan Quinn introduced or announced that Jaden Daniels was, shocker, the <laughs> starting quarterback of the team. Um, they want to see Brandon Coleman play. Um, he has not yet. Third round pick out of TCU, was having a terrific camp, unofficial first depth chart. They keep making you say unofficial <laughs> first depth chart, listed as the starter. That didn't come as much of a surprise, mainly because I don't think they have other options really outside of like, it's not that Cornelius Lucas can't play, but he didn't walk in the door as like, he's obviously the starting left tackle. So the door has been wide open for something like this to happen. Um, If this were to occur, where let's just say, not only does he start and play, but is actually like pretty good. Okay. Or like is moving forward their left tackle. That may be, the most important thing to happen outside of Daniels for this franchise for any period of time. Because just think about that for a second. He comes in as a third round pick, making third round money for four to five years, and he's your left tackle. Just consider the cap savings of not having to pay the 20 to 30 million a year to get the guy to protect our quarterback because of who he is. So that would be the all time break of all breaks with this draft class if that actually works out and he's had a shoulder injury he's missed some time and they're slow rolling him and they're not gonna quote unquote take a chance with him this weekend but if he can go I, and i doubt they haven't said whether Jaden will play against the patriots and i just doubt it but like we'll see i actually think he'll go out there and get some reps because i think they want to see him with the lights on so we'll see no, uh, I would want to see him too. Not unlike with Jaden, you know, the debate before the preseason was, oh, how much do you want to see him play? And for me, it was, he's, you got to get him out there. He's never played in the NFL before. It's the same thing with the Col- with Coleman. You have to get him out there for some amount of snaps, whether it's a drive, two, a half. I don't know how much work they want to get him, but I feel like he's got to play if he's healthy enough to go. And I think that's the right decision too. Like he's got to get his feet wet here. And then you've also got a couple of weeks until the first game anyway. So it's not like, 
he's got to go back up, you know, go right up to another game next weekend as well. Yes. Uh, the other thing I'm watching for this weekend is who are going to win the return jobs. They are still wide open. Um, well, maybe that might be the wrong way to put it. There's a lot of people vying to potentially do it. Um, will somebody different than what we've seen in the preseason do kick returns? I think that's possible. Like, I, I think that's possible. Byron Pringle, if he's going to win a job on the team, it will be via because not only is he a pretty good receiver at the bottom of the, you know, of the, of the group, but he's been effective on kick return. So that's possible for him. I still think it's possible that others may do it that they haven't really profiled in the preseason. In the punt return part of it, Cazella, I think they're, I think they want him to win that job. I think they need to find a role for him on offense. And that fumble didn't help the other day. It's the second year in a row that they've said, okay, man, show us. And he had a bad fumble in a preseason game. So I don't know how much that weight they're going to put on something like that because Quinn was talking about him again. I think they see the speed and explosiveness. I think they realize they don't have a lot of that on this team. And so they're like trying to find a way to earmark a spot for him so much so that they're even like, could he be a running back at this point? Because they have so many receivers and they don't want to cut anybody. And I don't think they see him necessarily as a better receiver than Pringle or Crowder or Tremaine for that matter. Like, so they got to, they got to like ear hole him into something, you know, like that to figure out how to do it. So I think that's going to be interesting this weekend too. Who gets the opportunities? Does anyone like classically, does anyone pop one? Because if they do, it's memorable for the coaches. And if it's Allen, I think they'll figure out a way to get them on the roster. And if not, they'll probably end up on the practice squad again. Uh, this is one of those ones. I always have like a couple where, you know, training camp and preseason ends, but the battle never really stops. I think this is going to be not a rotating door. I think it's an overstatement, but we're going to yeah. see a couple of these guys probably get cut and then re-signed and cut and re-signed. This is just one of those ones where it's not going to get settled this weekend, in my opinion. I think we're just going to see multiple iterations probably for the first half of the season. Not like how I was talked about the offensive line a little bit. This will this one though you can actually probably rotate a little bit more without you know as much urgency. Yeah. So I just think this is one that doesn't get settled this weekend. Probably not. All right. The other one I'm watching very closely is this corner. So um, the top you know four to five are relatively I think settled. Forbes, St. Juice, Davis, Igbenogany, Sandra still. So it doesn't feel like there's much of a battle there. But I know they like this undrafted rookie, Chiganusium, a lot. They actually gave him a decent amount of money, uh, you know, as a signing bonus for someone who wasn't drafted. He's been getting some opportunities. They put him a lot on special teams. Has he done enough to win a job? I don't know. And they also haven't given him any real run with the ones. So there's no hint that it's happening. They are name checking Castro fields, had a nice game, was very active against Miami clearly is vying to get a spot. Um, been around the league a couple of years now was formerly a draft pick was a Ron waiver wire pickup a couple of years ago has stuck around really stood out the other night. Can they find a way to find him a job? Maybe, but who's getting cut? for it. And then it was interesting because, you know, the kicker was brought up again and Quinn op openly admitted, he said, ask Adam Peters about it, but then was like, that battle is continuing. Well, there's no one else on the roster because their kicker is somewhere else right now. And he even said, you know, back in the good old days, you know, when they did two cuts, the specialist would get cut this week and we could have brought somebody else in, but because nobody has to do that right now, the extra kickers that teams have and we have played the jets who have two and we're going to play the Patriots who have two. those guys, those decisions haven't been made. So come Monday, Tuesday, we're going to see some kickers available. Well, he also just kind of mentioned and other position groups. I think this is one of them. Like this, th I think offensive line, if there was a surprise out there, like a surprise tackle somehow got cut. And they've been performing okay, but they just have too many players or don't want to pay this guy or whatever it is. And he gets put out on the open market. That's that typically doesn't happen. But if it does, I think I obviously I think this team would be interested. But I got a funny feeling that this is the position group he's talking about. That if some corner that they like surprisingly is cut next week, I wouldn't be shocked if that person gets brought in here. 
No, I mean, this is another one of those position groups that I think they have battles that are going to last into the season. Like, we're not going to have a consistent starting three to four, I think. I think we're going to see a rotation. So. Yeah, we're going to see a rotation of it. Andrew Stills a day one starter, but outside yes. of that, but he's slot corner. Outside of yep. that, I'm not sure. And I, I do feel like they're working with the people they think are the best at the position. They're open-minded to some younger guys who they haven't given the type of run that would suggest they're going to get those jobs. And then they're hinting, you know, we're going to watch the waiver wire. I think that's the position they're talking about. No, I agree. I also think it's going to matter, like, is there a veteran available? Like, I think they might be trying to add yeah. someone to that room that's, like, been around the block a few times to be the, quote-unquote, coach on the field, essentially. Yes. All right, one more football thing. Why are the Cowboys not signing CeeDee Lamb? What? I don't get what's going on here now. I think he went on Instagram and, and posted something that looked like Batman yesterday. Which <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. The, I'm, now I'm like the second time. Like I didn't know what the croissant picture was. I don't even know <laughs> what the references here. I'm so football brained with this team that like everything else has kind of disappeared for the last couple. This happens to be every August. I'll get back into the real world with everybody else. I did watch the DNC last night. So at least I saw that. But like. I will like, I'll get back in the real world in about a week when I get out of football brain. But like, I do, I no longer understand what's going on here. Like he is a top five to 10 receiver. The cost is the cost. This isn't Ayuk to me, actually. Yep. I think it is. I think he's a cut above this. I also think they can't win without him right now. Like go show me the other skill position people right now that you're scared of on that team. If you don't have him, their offense could go sideways. Like, I don't get it. Like, and Jerry's old and talks about wanting to win. Like, I totally don't get this at all anymore. The price is the price on this guy. It's actually two. It's not only CD, it's Chase. Like, that one's starting to heat up now as well. And what I don't get it with both cases is they are both the tier one guys. They are both. They're not going to both get Jefferson money. Chase might, but... I think Jefferson gave you the line and now adjust accordingly a little bit less for maybe both of those guys. The number is there. And what I actually really don't understand anymore is once you pay them, the price is automatically going down from there on out. Like the second you get it done, it becomes a deal with it. However, further along you get on it. So I don't really understand why are you waiting this out? It's just going to keep getting more expensive the longer you wait he's gotten better like his the first year i watched him like first couple of years i watched him and i'm like he's pretty good but like i don't know but he's gotten better and better and better he is now a top 10 to 5 receiver the price is the price there's nothing you can do about it and it's this is not a system player like no offense to Ayuk, but like I think Shanahan's probably even sitting there going, just give me, you know, high end athletes and I can teach them how to play within this system. It's not what's happening down there. And the window on that team seems to be shutting fast. Like they're making weird decisions. They're letting their roster get, you know, stripped down. They're not going all in. They're refusing to pay the quarterback who has them leveraged, even though I'm not sure that that's not the right thing or wrong thing to do. And I don't understand this one. I don't understand. He's a, he's a very, very high caliber player. He led the league in receptions last year. Like, what are you doing? So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is with them and I don't get it. And uh, we talked about this last week. Like there's, there's some semblance of Jerry's losing his fastball down there. Right. I, I told mean, you, I told you Dallas Cubs, up. Dallas Cubs. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think that like they're not cheap. Like that that's the craziest part of the whole thing. They're not cheap. But so you think they're just happy being a brand that they don't I think really so. Yeah. That that they're going we're good enough. Like as long as we dangle the carrot out there in front of all of our fans and we them boys and we win eight games and all of a sudden we're in the playoff mix. I don't know. For me it just feels like they are <laughs> they feel a little bit like the Philadelphia Flyers to me over the last like five to 10 years. Like you talk to people in the Flyers organization and they'll be like, we're back to hockey now, but for some reason, Gritty was our number one player there for like five years and we can't figure it out. And I think the Cowboys are like, 
kind of just smelling themselves a little bit too much. I think it's just, yeah. we're the Cowboys. We'll just get this done. And it's like, it's weird. you still have to run the team. You have to run the team still. Like, I don't get it. it. Yeah, it, I something's off. Like, I don't, why aren't they just paying him? Like, something's really, really well, off here. So the other I, thing that's, that's way off is, and I've, I've talked about this before, like, uh, and I read this, I think it was Barnwell. Or no, it was Graziano that did a whole, um, like, top 10 quarterbacks that could change hands next year and Dak was at the top of the list and the the details on Dak now are by the way are amazing not only is it a 40 million dollar dead cap hit next year if he doesn't return to the team they have to do it before the league year starts so that means if Dak hits free agency the 40 million dollar dead cap hits no matter what (laughs) like so they're stuck they have to give him a deal they have to well well, it's like trade him well, and if you don't have Dak, then CD is going to be like, I'm out, trade me. Like, I, I don't really like, I mean, maybe not if they pay him, but whatever. But all I'm getting at is, I don't know. To me, it feels like it's house of cards right now. Like you got to sign somebody to give everyone in that building going, okay, we're not yeah. crazy here. Cause even I think Parsons is looking at this going, why are you not paying What's those two guys? On? Yeah. yeah. You know, if I was him, I would be looking this at this going, what's going on? Like yeah. what? Like the team's getting worse around me. You guys aren't bringing anybody in to make us better. The players who clearly need to get paid for some reason can't get paid from you guys. Where am I with the Cowboys? Where am I right now? Yeah. Like, and that's the weirdest part of the whole thing. Here's the most valuable franchise on earth. A guy who cheap is not a word I would use for him. Like everything they do is first class. Every literally every, I love going down to their games. Like everything they do every team works with them in hospitality because it's first class i don't get this like i don't i don't understand what they're doing and it, i don't know it's like jerry's lost his fastball with this yeah. i don't understand I don't get it. I don't get all it. right let me take a quick break great much to show you at 6 30 sports capital All right, welcome back. Brad Bush, the show is fan 630 of the Sports Capital. I was going to get to Tua, but I kind of run out of time. Maybe I'll save that for tomorrow because I haven't heard someone trash an ex-coach probably correctly in a very long time. And if that, I mean, I'm assuming that what he said yesterday about how Flores would walk in and just basically tell him he was terrible every single day and how that really didn't help very much. Um, that was some truth telling I haven't heard before. And I think Tua is probably like, and I led the league in passing last year, so I get to do that. You know, we saw a little bit of that with Hard Knocks last year. Remember how McDaniel even mentions, like, I wanted to be more of a mentor to this guy and yeah. treat him a little bit better. Now that makes sense of where that was coming from because I think everyone saw that and looked at it as like, oh, is Tua sensitive? Like, I remember that's what I kind of thought when I saw this. was like, oh, does he not, like, does he need to toughen up a little bit? Now it all makes sense that it was Flores um, just bashing him the whole time. Abuse is abuse. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, that's what this sounds like this was on some level. And that's, I guess that's just his style of coaching, I guess. Um, we've seen this a lot with, uh, you know, very active parents of high level athletes. You heard this about like Andre Agassi's dad. Um, it doesn't sound like Richard Williams was that way. He was very hard on his daughters and trained them, but it doesn't sound like he was telling them they sucked all the time. At least that's not the picture that was painted, but there's others like high level athlete parents. We've run into this before where they kind of got where they got to because their parents were so rough on them all the time, mentally, constantly mentally. It sounds like that this coaching style, geez, I mean, like if that is true, I mean, now I have an even better understanding. Forget just the lawsuit stuff for a moment. Like, he can't be a head coach. I mean, if that's how you're going to treat high level athletes, what owner is going to want to hire you to do that? So, um, and then Tua gets the last laugh part of it to go, I just got extended here. And maybe had you treated me a little differently or worked with me a little different me or tutored me a little bit differently, maybe you'd be here too. But well, and it's also again. Flores. Flores hasn't gotten a head coaching gig since then, right? Yeah, I think and... that's been complicated. He sued the league, so I think sure. there was a lot kind of going on there. Sure, yeah. wasn't blackballed though. Um, yes. And then with Tua, we all know the secret was out on Tua that the ownership down there wanted him, you know, enough that they were tanking, you know, that season. Yeah. So I'm sure it was a tumultuous relationship from the get go, essentially. Yep. Uh, this one popped up. Bill Simmons made news. Is Jeff Bezos going to buy the Celtics now that they are up for sale? Bill Simmons maybe is wishful thinking it a little bit. 
Bill Simmons is also going, I made a ton of money with the ringer and all this other stuff. But if that guy buys my favorite team and I end up being friends with him, I make it a yacht. Yeah. So like, <laughs> probably a little wishful thinking, but this one actually makes more sense to me. Well, he could buy both. He could buy the NFL and the, he's one of the few that could do both if he really wanted to. This one makes more sense with the new TV deal coming in with Amazon that he would actually buy into the NBA and not just buy into the NBA, but buy one of the two biggest brands in the, or three biggest brands in the NBA. That would make a lot of sense to me. Um, so he probably sees by now there because the values are going up really, really, really fast, but they're going to skyrocket really, really, really soon with this new TV deal coming in. So I actually buy this as a possibility because he can write, he's one of the few that can just write the check, doesn't have to, you know, get private equity money or all this other stuff or ask the Saudis for money or whatever it is. He's one of the few that can do it. It is an enormous brand, not just a team, an enormous brand. He also walks into a championship caliber team, which is probably nice too. Um, I buy this actually that he could buy them. I also buy this too, because the brands in the NBA are few and far between. It's the Celtics, it's the Lakers, it's the Knicks, it's the Warriors. I mean, I think that's the list. I don't think there's any other team that comes close to those four and you buy them. And I've been waiting for this too, because I've told you how much I loathe fanatics and just how like everything is, you know, poor quality. When's Amazon going to hop in though? And you get your Jersey two days later. Like right. I'm, I'm waiting for this. I've been waiting for a decade for it to happen. And if he does that, it's going to bridge the gap to a whole other thing where now all of a sudden, all these leagues are going to go, you can buy all your stuff now and you're going to get it in two days. Like I'm telling you, like, this is, this is a match that has been kind of like overdue at this point. And if it's the Celtics, it's not going to surprise me at all. It's one of the four franchises. I'm picturing these screens turning into, you can bet in this widget, you can buy a jersey <laughs> in this widget. Widget. You can watch the game. You could watch a different cam review in this widget. You can listen to an all broadcast in this widget. Like it's the shopping mall of sports and Amazon's going to make that happen. Amazon, Apple, Google, those are the companies that are going to make that happen. And when that does start happening in the, in the, and you know, all of the, it's not like they're not making money already, but it's going to continue to just go up and up and up. Well, like who should own something like that? Him. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do believe it now off of the commander's, you know, owner search thing that he did genuinely consider buying this team. So all along, I was like, does he even want to own a team? So I buy this now that I know that he was genuinely at least looking into the commanders. I buy this. And if he's going to buy a team, you might as well buy the biggest brand. I think the only, so I, I think the only hang up on that would be, does the NBA give him a tip off of, we are bringing it back to Seattle in a reasonable amount of time. I think it's the only maybe. thing that could maybe pause this, but even then it's the Celtics. Like, why would you not want to own the them? Seattle Amazon <laughs> are not as the Boston Celtics. And he knows that. <laughs> it's correct. Yes. So he, he, could he buy the Seahawks and own the Celtics? Yeah. Yep. I think that's a possibility. Yep. Possibility. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Brave Boston show. He's paying 630 in the sports capital.